Is your brand new Pixel 9 phone spying on you in nefarious ways? That is essentially the primary claim of this article on cybernews.com. We're going to try to dig into this, see what the primary claims here are, and talk through them. Is this actually something to worry about? Before I go any further, I will say that this article is linked in the description down below so that you can go check it out yourself. But we have a lot of ground to cover. So let's scroll down and let's kind of get into the meat of this article. Google's latest flagship smartphone raises concerns about user privacy and security. It frequently transmits private user data to the tech giant before any app is installed. Moreover, the Cyber News research team has discovered that it potentially has remote management capabilities without user awareness or approval. And we have our key takeaways here. There's a lot in this article, but we'll just kind of go through these key takeaways really quickly. First, I'll, I'll say that they're using a quote unquote man in the middle approach where basically they're intercepting data that's going from the phone to Google's servers to kind of pick up what's actually leaving the phone and going to their servers. Private information was repeatedly sent in the background, including the user's email address, phone number, location, app list, and other telemetry and statistics. The phone constantly requests new experiments and configurations, tries accessing the staging environment, and connects to device management and policy enforcement endpoints, suggesting Google's remote control capabilities. The Pixel device is connected to services that were not used, nor explicit consent was given, such as face group and endpoints causing privacy and ownership concerns. The calculator app, in some conditions, leaks calculations calculations history to unauthenticated users with physical access. Now, there's a lot of this that maybe you understand what this is about and some of it that maybe you don't. It's a lot of very complicated stuff. So we're going to try to go through as much of this as possible because I think it's really important for everyone to understand as best I can explain and as best I understand it, what exactly the claims are. So the phone beams data periodically. Every 15 minutes, it's sending a regular authentication request to an endpoint called auth, presumably when it's basically checking in and it is sending information such as firmware version, if you're connected to Wi-Fi or mobile data, SIM, carrier, email address. It's basically just sending this in every 15 minutes, checking in. The phone is also checking for new code to run. This is the bit talking about them having this sort of remote control ability. The biggest takeaway here, I think, is they have the ability to remotely install new applications on your device if they see fit. They can just push something to your phone and have it installed. This one seems a bit more innocuous to me. Calculator leaks calculations. Researchers observed a risky aspect when the Pixel device is, on, is locked. The calculator app is accessible through the notification tray widget. You can see your calculator history. I'm not real worried about that one. So your Pixel is checking in with Google. It's sending some of your information about the current state of your phone. Google has the ability to modify things on your phone remotely, be it changing uh, sort of settings or installing applications. They can remotely do that stuff and your calculator, your calculations <laughs> might be slightly at risk. Now, Google actually did respond to them and gave a quote, which we can read here. User security and privacy are, are top priorities for Pixel. You can manage data sharing, app permissions, and more during device setup and in your settings. This report lacks crucial context, misinterprets technical details, and doesn't fully explain that data transmissions are needed for legitimate services on all mobile devices, regardless of the manufacturer, model, or operating system, such as software updates, on-demand features, and personalized experiences. So Google basically says, yeah, this stuff is mostly true, but you're not understanding what it's used for. You're not communicating that properly, and that's going to mislead people. But of course, Google is going to defend themselves. They're going to say that what they're doing is perfectly normal. So I think what we need to do is we need to take a look at some information from a third party. And luckily, we got this series of tweets from Graphene OS. If you do not know about Graphene OS, what this is, is basically, I clicked on the wrong link. That's the one I needed. What it is, is a privacy centered, a privacy focused flavor of Android. They take Android and they strip out all of the Google stuff in it 
and they add some additional security features. So these guys are going to know what's going on with Android. They're going to be able to answer some of these questions. And boy, did they. They say that this is a highly inaccurate article that is making the rounds. It gets details nearly completely wrong and thoroughly misrepresents things like the optional network-based location used nearly everywhere as pixel-specific. So the first thing that they say here is that any non-pixel device with a standard Google Play integration has similar Google service integration doing the same things. So when we're talking about this phone sending data every 15 minutes with this sort of stuff in it, every Android phone is absolutely doing this, and there are legitimate reasons why. This is interesting, though. You don't avoid it at all by using a non-pixel, but you do end up with a device that's far less secure and adds OEM services with their own privacy issues. So this is implying very clearly that pixels are more secure than the alternative Android OEMs. They double down on this. If what people take away from this article is that they should use a non-pixel Android device with Google Play, they'll have a dramatically less secure device with the same privacy issues and additional ones from OEM services. Now, this is an important bit here as well. iOS has direct equivalence to everything that is covered. Apple is doing the same sorts of things. Your iPhone is going to be sending this similar information back to Apple as well. But iPhones aren't the same. They actually do talk about this here as well. iOS does provide better privacy from third-party apps than AOSP or the stock Pixel OS. What they're talking about here is the fact that basically with Android, your data, your files is more easily accessible via third-party apps than it is inside iOS. And they kind of dig into this a bit here. Graphene OS is a major security upgrade over Pixel OS or iPhone, but iOS is a clear next best overall choice for privacy after Graphene OS. So they talk about how there's a feature called storage scopes they add in that is needed for parity with iOS. And what storage scopes or contact scopes does is it basically isolates your data, your files from third-party apps in a way similar to what iOS does automatically. I forgot to mention this in the video, so I will add it in in B-roll. It kind of almost reminds me of this thing that Google has been slowly doing, slowly improving on, like right here with Google Photos. Instead of giving it access to all files, all photos and videos, you can allow limited access and give it access to specific photos. So it does seem like Google is working on this type of thing, but it's something that they definitely can improve on going forward. They do say this, though, and this is a very important distinction. The idea that iPhones have better privacy from Apple than Pixels do from Google is largely just a misconception, and there's a whole lot of confirmation bias happening. So... An iPhone is sending data to Apple the same way that a Pixel device is sending data to Google. The difference is that an iPhone is going to give less data to third-party apps than a Pixel is. So an Android device is more likely to let a third-party app access your data than an iPhone is. So by virtue of that, iPhones, iOS devices are more secure, but we're talking about via third-party apps, not what this article is completely basing itself on, which is the idea that they're sending your data to Google, and that is a novel thing, it's unique to Pixel devices, and it's a bad thing, which I guess it's up to you if it's a bad thing or not. But it's definitely not something that's like this weird, nefarious thing that Pixels are doing that your Samsung phone doesn't do or your iPhone doesn't do. They all do it. Now, I do want to give credit where credit is due. If you do what most people don't do, and you actually read the article, you will see many places where they acknowledge what this data is likely, potentially, being used for. Location and other sensitive data may be integral to many Google services and features, such as the newly introduced car crash detection. You know that bit about remotely controlling your device, installing applications, changing settings? Well, they acknowledge that that stuff might be used for A-B testing, trying out new user interface elements. And we know that Google does this all the time. They do updates and everyone goes... I don't have that feature, and then suddenly I had the feature, but no update actually rolled out. That's because it was rolled out server-side. It was actually turned on on their end, and that's not that far from what we're talking about with A-B testing. Again, 
Google does A-B testing all the time, so they do need this ability to do those things. The phone continuously requested Google servers for updates on known scam-related phone numbers. They say presumably for its call screening features. Well, I would assume that's probably, uh, maybe not presumably, that seems definitely like what that's for. Oh, and by the way, not a single data packet traveled to any third parties during the observation period. So that seems like this is just Google doing Google things with your Google phone. To wrap things up, guys, this is what I think. Your smartphone, whether it is a Pixel phone, a Samsung phone, a OnePlus phone, an Apple phone, whatever it might be, if it is a modern smartphone, it is gathering insane amounts of data and it is sending that data back and forth all the time to enable the incredible features, the incredible things that these phones are capable of doing. I fully understand why some people don't like that that's a thing, and that's why, you know, OSs like Graphene OS actually exist for people to want to stop that. But of course, when you stop that, you do lose the features that require it to run. If you want call screening and car crash detection and probably a million other Android features, they have to be able to do these things. It's up to you if you like this or not, if you think that it is worth it or not is probably the better way to phrase it. But at the end of the day, this article does seem to be taking things a little bit far and definitely pushing a certain narrative that I don't think is either accurate or beneficial to consumers. Not only will there be a link to the article in the description down below, I will also put a link to the Graphene OS website as well because they did a lot of great work debunking this stuff here and kind of enabled me to bring this stuff to you. And I think a lot of people will be interested in looking at Graphene OS. So definitely check that out, guys. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more content just like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.